Det är en stor ära att få presentera Nobelpristagaren i kemi. Es ist eine große Ehre, den Nobelpreisträger in Chemie zu präsentieren. It is a great honor to introduce the Nobel laureate in chemistry, Professor Stefan Hey. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen. What a week, what a day, and what a night. I cannot imagine anything more exhilarating than to stand here this evening, also on behalf of my colleagues W. E. Myrna and Eric Betzig, thanking the Swedish Academy and the Nobel Foundation for the honor that has been bestowed upon us. We are so grateful to all who have supported us on our path and, above all, we feel very, very humbled. Like all laureates, each of the three has his own road to this magnificent hall. Our personal stories have been quite different. Yet, we have much in common, passion for what we do and fascination with things that cannot be done or, let's say, things that cannot be done, supposedly. Erwin Schrödinger, who spoke at his banquet 81 years ago tonight, wrote, it is fair to state that we are not going to experiment with single particles anymore than we will raise dinosaurs in the zoo. Well, one of us, WE, discovered just the opposite. Single molecules can indeed be seen and played with individually. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what do we learn from this? First, Erwin Schrödinger would never have gone on to write Jurassic Park. <laughs> Second, as a Nobel laureate, you should say, this or that is never going to happen because you will increase your chances tremendously of being remembered decades later in a Nobel banquet speech. <laughs> and so, on to super-resolution fluorescence imaging. According to the belief, molecules closer together than 200 nanometers could not be told apart with focused light. This is because in a packed molecular crowd, the molecules shout out their fluorescence simultaneously causing the signal, their voices, to be confused. But believe it or not, Eric found a way to discern the molecules by calling on each one of them individually using a microscope so simple that he built it with a friend in his living room. As for myself, I never had that kind of patience. Calling on each molecule one by one, no way. I just told all of them to be quiet, except for a selected few. Just keep the molecules quiet and let only a few speak up. A simple solution to a supposedly unsolvable problem. It made the resolution limit history. Now have a guess where did this idea occur to me. Not very far from here, actually, in a student dorm in Finnish Obo in what you may kindly call a living room. So, what does it take, ladies and gentlemen, to end up standing here telling you a story of important discoveries or improvements? Well, you definitely need a living room. <laughs> At the very least, you need a place to sleep. And when you fall asleep, you may forget that others consider you too daring or too foolish. But when morning comes, you would better find yourself saying, I have so many choices of what to do or what to leave every morning, every day. I better judge for myself and go ahead and do it. Because nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come, even if it came in a living room or to someone with a humble living. 
And if you feel we'll never raise dinosaurs, who knows? One day, someone may be actually standing here giving a banquet speech. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us embrace a culture that addresses problems deemed impossible to solve, and let us now honor those who will do so with a toast. Skål.